ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਦਿਸ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਆਫ ਸਿੱਖ ਚੈਨਲ ਮਾਈ ਨੇਮ ਇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰਿਤਪਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਐਂਡ ਆਮ ਯੋਰ ਹੋਸਟ ਫੋਰ ਟੁਨਾਈਟ ਟੁਨਾਈਟ ਵੀ ਗੋਨ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਟੂ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਸਪੈਸ਼ਲ ਫਰੈਂਡ ਆਫ ਮਾਈਨ ਹਰਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਐਮ ਟੂ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਵਿਦ ਹਰਜਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਸਿੱਖ ਐਕਟਿਵਿਸਟ ਅ ਬਲੌਗਰ ਅ ਫੋਰਮਰ ਚੈਪਲਨ ਐਟ ਦਾ ਹੀਥਰੋ 에어ਪੋਰਟ ਇਨ ਪਾਸਟ ਹੀ ਯੂਸਟ ਟੂ ਰਾਈਟ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਸਿੱਖ ਟਾਈਮਸ ਨਿਊਜ਼ਪੇਪਰ uh he was also a khalsa aid sevadar and has been to india in tamil nadu in 2004 uh because of the tsunami which happened in the indian ocean at that time uh he also facilitates annual event in ipa which is in belgium uh to commemorate the sikh soldiers died during the both world wars the first and the second this is an annual annual event happens in belgium every year um very recently harjinder singh helped mobilize uh, Sikhs in Belgium with the with the, the Star Day event that was initiated by the Sikh channel. Now, before I pass on to uh, my dear friend Harjinder, I just want to inform you that the first part of the program we'll try to do in English and uh, the we'll see how it goes with time and the last part, perhaps the last 10-15 minutes we'll be we'll be doing it in Dutch because a he's from the Netherlands but he's currently living living in Belgium so we want to focus on the six issues concerning the Sikhs living in the Benelux and we will be also taking phone calls during the whole show so i encourage uh, our viewers especially from the Netherlands and the Belgium to do call us during this show and if you have any questions which you would like Harjinder to sing to answer Ajun Singh Wai Guji ka Khalsa Wai Guji ka Khalsa Now welcome to the Sikh channel First of all I'd like to ask you to to start with uh, giving us uh, telling us a little bit about your your background where you from where were you born I was born in the southeast of the Netherlands very close to where I am now in Belgium mm-hmm. and uh, I I come from a Christian background from a Protestant Christian background the Dutch reformed church and I was 50 when I changed over to Sikhi and we'll talk more about uh, the details of that a bit sure. more later on I I have been to university I I studied both political science and Dutch language and literature and I didn't finish either of them uh, then I've worked for 25 years in the travel trade and I that that also helped me in traveling around in in the, the world quite a bit i by now i've lived in the netherlands i've lived in ireland i've lived in india and i'm now in belgium belgium so and i've lived in the uk for 10 years for 10 well. years yes i i am not unknown to these parts uh, no. uh, tell us a bit about uh, your how do you start uh, your initial journey with Sikhism how you became Sikh from from somebody who's I think your mom was Catholic and your dad was Protestant or other way no no they were both from from Protestant, Protestant background right. yeah yeah uh, th- this is a long story and I could talk till till yeah. three o'clock in the morning but I'll, I'll try to give the short version mm-hmm. I, I already said to you it was about 50 when I started changing mm-hmm. and you know like like 50 is often an age where where people start looking back on their life and saying you know did i do well and and is this really how i wanted to be and i i came to the conclusion that i really might have achieved some goals in the sense that i had a good job and i had you know i, I had a nice house in the center of amsterdam and all that other thing but i i wasn't really happy i wasn't really satisfied i thought like that there must be more to life than this you know and the other thing was that i sort of you know like like in the business culture where you always sort of after work come together in the pub and and, and having you know two drinks three drinks four drinks five drinks etc i i gradually came became an alcoholic not the sort of alcoholic that you you imagine you know the sort of person that you see laying Constance. in the gutter yeah. and, and what have you i i i got up every morning i got well dressed and i went to my work and all that but i just drank too much and if i didn't drink i couldn't sleep uh, I, you know i, I got what the, the english so nicely called the hebie jeebies <laughs> and 
So I, I was an alcoholic. Right. You know, there was no, no ifs or buts about it. So I wanted to change. And, and how do you do this? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then in, at this time, I met this guy who had just around the corner from where I lived. He had a small Punjabi taba. It was really like that. It that was, was in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, yeah. Uh, yeah, although I come from the south, I, I lived Amsterdam. most of my adult life in, in Amsterdam. Sorry, I should have said that. And uh, he was a Mona. Yeah. Uh, he was not an Amritari Sikh or anything oh, like okay, that. Satari, just yeah, no, no, he was just a Mona. Mm -hmm. But he had a very nice way of treating his customers. He was not commercially friendly. He had not, not the plastic smile. He was genuinely friendly and, and welcoming to the people. And he also did seva to the local people. You know, like there was an old lady living next to him, and he helped her getting her shopping in. Right. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah? He didn't talk about religion, but he did it. Mm. Yeah? I didn't realize where he came from, what his background was. And, and he started telling me, you know, when I asked him, you know, what. How, how come you are so different from most commercial restaurant owners? And he explained that his father was an Amritari Sikh. All oh, right. Uh, he, he came from uh, Navasher, you know, like on, on the Ropar Fagwara uh, Road. And uh, he done what so many Sikhs have done when they came to Europe. He, he cut his hair, you know, just before he got on the plane. But he kept his idea of seeing God's presence in everybody and treating everybody as your brother and sister. That that he kept alive yeah. and, and, and and practiced that in his in the bit in his business. So that he got from his Amritari father. Yeah. He raised up, uh, and he got a Sikhi, and his Sikhi, even though he was Mona, attracted you. Yeah. And and the f just the fact that he wasn't preaching anything, but he was doing it. Mm. Yeah? It is so easy to talk about grand principles and, and, and yeah. about all, all sort of, uh, you know, uh, wonderful things that, that, that really, but so many people talk about it, but they don't they do it. Do uh, he didn't talk about it, well, but he did, he did it. it. Yeah? And, and that appealed to me very much. It, it's, if, if I can just make, go one step back, I grew up in an area that was overwhelmingly Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. and we were Protestants. And there I saw two groups that were talking about God is love and all that, but they hated each other. Mm. Yeah? So they talked about the principles, but they didn't practice them. In this guy, I saw the opposite. Yeah? Right. And that really attracted me. And, and then you started you changing, did you start keeping your hair? Or no, no. Start no, 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 no. I, I, you know, because of the drinking problem, I thought I have to make a completely clean break. Mm -hmm. I have to not stay in Amsterdam, not even go to London or Paris, because I know all, all the places to get drunk in there as well. Yeah? I have to go somewhere completely different. Right. I also had developed this idea that I wanted to know more about Sikhi. Right. So the answer was simple. I went to Punjab. Right. Yeah? I gave up my job. I, I owned half, half of a house in Dublin. I sold that. That was more than enough money to see me through in India. And I just went there. So how, long did, you, how long did you stay in, in Punjab then? I, I, I went for a year. For a year? Yeah, Initially. in 1996, and I came back in 2000. Right. So <laughs> so it was a bit of a long year, right. you know. So you went, you were here in Amsterdam. You met this guy who was a Sikh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not Kesatari. Yeah, yeah. Still, you liked the way he treated people. Yeah, yeah. And you want to kick off your alcohol addiction. Yeah, yeah. You went to India. You planned to go to India for a year. Mm -hmm. But you stayed four years. Yeah, now, exactly. Now, tell us briefly, in four years, what you did and where you stayed. OK. I first went to Delhi. And I had my first paid karap in Delhi. But we, we won't talk about that too much. And then after about a week in Delhi, I went to Amritsar. Mm -hmm. And I, I had heard that you could stay in Darbarsa. But I'd never been to the place. So I thought, like, I first check in into a hotel. Right. Uh, and then I'm going to see about this place and see what it's like. So I checked into a hotel just, just uh, near the railway station in Amritsar. I, I found my way through the maze of little streets, uh, my, my way to, to Darbar Sap. And I mean, like, there's two things that happened immediately. The first thing was I walked in Parkarma. And, you know, like, you come from, from the 
uh, bazaar area of Amritsar, which is very dirty Possibly, and yeah. smelly, and, yeah. and, and, and you know all these 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 vehicles that that stink and and, and what have you. And then you walk through the gate, yeah. yeah, and it is super clean, yeah. and you got all the white buildings around it. Yeah. You see the nice rover. You see the barsa up there, and you hear the wonderful kirtan. From, from, you know, I hadn't a clue what they were singing about, but from the first moment that I heard it, I was greatly impressed by it because it sounded so nice. Mm. And then I walk on the Park Arma and I turned left because I saw everybody going that way. And I came near to where you, you go to, to, to the Langer, yeah, to Ramdas Langer. And a little boy came to me and said, Paisa, Paisa, come and eat. Yeah? Right. <laughs> and, you know, like, this sort of simple hospitality as well, you know, like, like so the, the first two impressions were the wonderful music, the cleanliness, the, the, the purity. Yeah. yeah. And the second one was this Free little food. guy. Coming you check to have food longer. Yeah, have longer. Have yeah. longer. So the next day I checked in into the Niwas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and so sealed by fate as right. I wrote once. Right. There is something else. On the night before I flew, I had a session with a friend of mine. And we did more than just having a few drinks. And we did a few other things that are done in Amsterdam as well. And it was the last time I smoked tobacco. It was the last time I, I had any alcohol, alcohol. And it was the last time I smoked any pun. Mm. Yeah? Because for some reason, without me even trying, even from the moment I arrived in Delhi, the no, no, from the moment I entered and Delhi, I have not touched any drugs in any shape or form anymore. Yeah, yeah? that's been more than 15 years now. Yeah. Right. Is that what you call kirpa, or the, the, the concept of kirpa, grace in sikh faith? Yeah. Or you see, like, like, I mean, we've been, been listening to the, the, the previous program. Yeah. Now, I've learned after I went through this experience, something about AA, the uh, uh, Alcoholics Addiction. Anonymous. Right. Yeah? And, and their teaching is very simple. Their teaching is this addiction is too strong for you. You need spiritual help. You need God. We don't mind what you call God. Call, call God Allah or, or Ram or Rahim or any Muslim or Sikh or Buddhist or, or whatever word. Yeah. Yeah? But you have to sort of go on your knees and say to God, please, please help me, because this is too big for me. Mm -hmm. yeah? That's what I did. Right. Yeah? I didn't know that it was, was, was anything to do with AA or any, any sort of standard, but that, that's exactly what I did. I want to change. I, I want to become more fulfilled, and I want to get rid of this addiction. And the change happened. And the change happened. Yeah, yeah. That's it was tough, yeah? because if you all of a sudden stop smoking and, and drinking and, and, and smoking pang, pang is not all that addictive physically, but it is habit forming. Right. And if, if you leave all the three in, in, in one go, yeah, I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I won't go, I won't dwell on it too long, but I, I can sum it up like this. In the beginning, either I, you know, I went to bed and I couldn't sleep at all until sort of the last hour before I was meant to get up. I, I, I had a fitful sleep for an hour, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or I was so knackered, so tired the next day that I fell asleep. But within an hour, I was awake again. And the thoughts, all the things that you've been suppressing. Mm. Yeah? Because by, by drinking alcohol every night, you don't dream you, the, the thoughts of things in the past that you've done and you're not so happy about. They are all suppressed. They're all pushed away. And they all came back. Yeah? So it, it wasn't easy. But there was something else. And I heard one day people talking about me. And they said, this guy always has like some, sh his eyes shine. Right. Yeah? And I know, what it was. I, I know exactly what it was, because I, I started. A sparkle in your eyes. A, a sparkle in my eyes, and I, because I started getting nearer to God. Right. Yeah? So I, I was physically troubled. Mm -hmm. But I was happy. I was in Chardikala. I didn't know the, the word yet, but yeah. I was in Chardikala. So, so in four years, very briefly, what else did you do in four years? Because four years is a very long time of somebody's life. Um, yeah. I, 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 you know, like you can say, the first three, four months were completely dedicated to 
you know, getting rid of, of, of the addiction and, yeah. and ch changing to a new lifestyle and yeah. what have you. And uh, from about the third or fourth month, I started doing that. My, my, I, I met somebody and he gave me a translate, translation of Supanisab. Right. And I think that was a very good choice. English. Uh, no, uh, English with, with you know, the, the, the uh, Harban Singh Duabia, with the original text and the transcription and, and the uh, English translation. Right. And, and I think it was a good idea to start with Supanisab because it, Guru Arjun has a very nice way of simply say very deep things. Right. Yeah, and you, you often find also in translations of Guru Granth Sahib that a lot of the poetry of Guru, Guru Arjun translates easier than, for instance, the earlier writings, the older writings of Guru Nanak. Yeah. So I, I, I read that, and then I started with the nickname. And then that guy, he gave me the eight books, the full translation of Guru Granth Sahib right. by Man, Man Mohan Singh. Yeah. And, and that also has uh, you know, the, the original text and next to it, the translation, and it has the key word numbered. So if it says Prab in the original text, right. or Prabhu, yeah, then it says God in, in, in the English, with both the, the, the number ek or the number do or whatever it is. So you can see, see which num word, word led to, to what. Okay, so that, that, was that, the, that was the initial that was program. I, I started doing part, I started reading the Guru Granth Sahib, then I met this guy, who was a Hindu guy, he became a very good friend of mine, and he had a little shop. Mm -hmm. And he was a bit low on capital. And what he did was every Sunday he went to Ludhiana, and he bought like ready-made clothes, mm -hmm. and he sold them in Amritsar. Right. So I, I joined his business, I put some money in it. Not so much because I was looking for earning something, but I, I you know, just to there is more to life than just doing path. Right. Yeah? And, and, uh, and that was nice, you know, that was good. And, so you are this and, 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 white and guy yeah. in, in the middle of Amritsar. Amritsar is not a really touristic place. It's not Jaipur or... No, no, or, no, no, exactly. Or Agra or, you know, no, 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 no. And how was it living as a um, white European in the middle of Punjab, especially in Amritsar? Yeah. Uh, I have had very few negative experiences, very few. Most people were very loving and very open. Mm -hmm. And I was living, you know, not in any posh area, but in, in, in a little uh, neighborhood, a little Mohalla, in the neighborhood, you know, five, 10 minutes walk from, from Darbar Sahib. Mm -hmm. And one of these areas where the streets, well, I, I won't exaggerate, yeah. they were about this wide, uh. yeah, gullies. Yeah? I could shake hands with the neighbors through, mm -hmm. through, through my window. But the people were, almost all of them, very welcoming, li loving. Mm -hmm. yeah? The kids, they were very keen on me. They, they all called me Angre's uncle. <laughs> so I, I was, you know, like, if you come as a Punjabi to England or to the Netherlands or Belgium, you don't get that reception that I got in Punjab. Mm. Yeah? The, the, the famous Punjabi uh, hospitality. OK. Yeah. The uh, famous ho Punjabi hospitality uh, was, was, you know, was met with in, in a big way. Right. I think uh, we are ready now to take phone calls. So. If any of the callers want to join us, so please, you can do it now. Uh, we're waiting for our colleague to tell us when the calls are ready. Um, before I receive a phone call, can you just tell me, now talk about, a little about Amrit. Do you took Amrit, how long were you in Punjab? I, okay, I, I was in uh, Amritsar uh, roughly sort of like around the 18th of January. I, I can't remember exactly, but I spent about a, a, a bit more than a week in, in, in Delhi, and then about the 18th of January, I came to Amritsar. Mm -hmm. And on the 14th of July of that se same year, yeah. I took Amrit. So within six months, you become a baptized Sikh? Yeah, well, I, I don't, well, I'm not very keen on that word <laughs> baptized, because that, that, that's, you know, it, it's, okay. quite, it's quite different from right. what, what Christian baptism is. But I, I, I always use, initi I was an initiated, initiated Sikh. In if, I, if I have to, yeah. I was initiated in, in the, the order of the Khalsa, yeah. yeah. And, and that sounds, Stupid in that, the that sense. That sounds very, very fast to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but you see, like my main job during that time was studying mm -hmm. Sikhi, yeah. reading the Guru Granth Sahib, yeah. doing seva in in Darbar Sahib. Full stop for six, yeah. six months. Uh, cleaning the lasan, cleaning the piyas, yeah. uh, uh, cleaning the the, the the parkarma. You know, so my my main interest, my focus was on on learning more about Sikhi and learning how, more how to practice Sikhi. Mm -hmm. And, and 
because of the big changes in me, yeah, both physically but also mentally, my, you can say my, my third eye was wide open yeah. and my, my, my tenth body opening was wide open. Yeah? And I was fully open to new spiritual experiences. And, and I mean, like, the, the, the moment really that defined my further uh, development was one morning after bringing in the Guru Granth Sahib from, from, well, it wasn't in Akal Takht yet, because Akal Takht was still on, under uh, reconstruction. Right. But in the building, you know, where we have the two Nishan Saps? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the, 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 on they the kept, right on the right hand side, they, yeah. kept, they kept the Guru Granth Sahib there. Right. And we brought in the Guru Granth Sahib. Early and morning. then I, I usually went to the back side, you know, where the Harki Pauri is? Mm -hmm. Because inside the bar sap is big rush, you know. So I sat outside, mm -hmm. and I had I had darshan. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I had a big experience of God, and, and I tell you, I, I had a smile from ear to ear, and the tears were streaming from my eyes at the same right. time. Right. Yeah, it was just it, I, I didn't have a vision, but it was a a, a, a very strong emotion, mm -hmm. yeah, which sort of elated me, you know, like that made me really happy and, and, and feeling very moved and feeling very close to God. Let me check with my colleague if the, the callers are already. Varinder Singh Ji? Well, we are still waiting for the sign yep. for them to... So you stayed there four years, and then what happened? You decided to come yep. back to Europe? Yeah, well, I mean, like, as I said, you know, in, in Harmander Sahib, I, it, over in Amritsar, I stayed for two and a half years. Right. And that was basically, you know, like either working with my friend in a little business or, or doing seva in their bar shop. And then the last year and a half, I spent in Chandigarh. Mm -hmm. And there I had a more formal role because I was one of the editors of the, the journal of the Institute of Sikh Studies. Now the, the journal was published in English. And of course, the authors were, were Punjabis. Right. And they, they had all reasonable English, but it needed a bit of you know, sprucing up and what have you. Right. And the irony was that the two editors, the one, one was a uh, Danish lady and the other one was a Dutch gentleman. Oh, right, right. So both <laughs> Europeans, you were editors of this paper. And, and we were both six. Six, yeah. yeah. And that was in Chandigarh. And that was in Chandigarh. You stayed yeah. there for a year and a half. Yeah, they know for, yeah, for a year and a half. half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you decided to move back to your Europe. Yeah. In, in, in 2000, I, it was One? like, like fe fe February 2000, I came back. And I, I had really sort uh, of. And where did you come? You, you went back to the Hang on, hang on, hang on, because I, I had a long think about that. Right. There, were, there was one, there were two reasons why I didn't want to go back to the Netherlands. The first one was that I was still worried that if I went back to my old haunts, I would go back to my old habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the second one was that I was really looking for somewhere where there was a big enough Sikh community, you know, a well-established big Sikh community where you had the sort of Gurdwari that would offer the same sort of things that I would get from, from Darbar Sahib or from the other big historical Gurdwaras, you know, like, like Bangla Sahib or Sijka or... Uh, and where was that place? And that place, it starts with L and ends with N. It's called London. London, but <laughs> I think it's more talking about more south though. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I had been to Southall once before, right. yeah, years and years ago, right. when, when everybody there was still Mona. Yeah. Yeah? So I, I had some inkling. You know that, that horrible green building when you come from the railway station mm -hmm. and, and you turn left yeah, and you go into the green, there is this old green office block that's been standing empty for, for youngs. And the company that I worked for, they had their head offices there. Oh, right. And that, that was my first visit to Southall. So then you choose to come to, to London. Yeah. Because you thought there were more Sikhs living in London, so you'll be able to connect much yeah. better. And, and, and also, you see, one of the things that I wanted to do very badly was share my experiences with others. Right. Yeah. Now, in Punjab, I had the big problem that my Punjabi was just not up to you know, dealing with, with Punjab, full Punjabi speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I can talk to Punjabi speakers who have a bit of English, right. yeah, where, where I can use my bit of Punjabi and they their bit of English. But if it's, you know, to go to a Punjabi village and talk about Sikhi, that I just can't do that. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then if you start to, to learn a completely new language at, at, at age 50, that, that stuff. Let's, let's focus now on your work in the UK. You stayed here for 10 years yeah. right, before moving back to Belgium. Um, what and, did and, you and, do? And we, we, you've mentioned already Guru Skirpa. Yeah. Yeah? I have been offered jobs all along the line. Right. I, I made myself available, you can say. Mm -hmm. yeah? I was there 
and I, I, I jumped at opportunities. But even, you know, like, like within a fairly short time after arriving here, I had a part-time position with the, the, the Sikh Human Rights Group of, of Dr. Jardir Singh Rai. And I, 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 did, I worked there for, for a year. And then I got through Jagdeep Singh from, from, South, from Slough, and this somebody that people might know. He put me on in connection with the, the uh, Slough Race Equality Council, who needed people to receive visitors in the Gurdwara, okay. yeah, non-Sikh visitors. That was in Slough. That was in Slough. Right. And then I, I got some training from, from them, and I started doing independently full trainings on you know, in, in general, the field of equality is not just in culture and religion, but also uh, disabilities and stuff like that, you know. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that, that got me, they, those two together got me sort of through the, th the first five years. And they were both, you know, j jobs that had an element of, I, I was making a living. Yeah. I was getting basic my basic wage. But also serving the But community. I was also serving the community, community. exactly, right. yeah. Which is the, the main concept of Sikh, like Seva. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, like, you can also do your job with a seva mentality. Yeah? If, if you work in the bank, yeah. you can treat your customers as if they are pieces of filth, and you can treat your customers with respect. Mm -hmm. You can truly try to help your customers, or you can try to get rid of them as soon as possible. Right. Yeah? Anything you do, you can have the spirit of seva, yeah. introduce the spirit of seva into it. Absolutely. And then it becomes a completely different thing. It, it becomes part of your life. And it, anyway, uh, the second half of the 10 years I spent in, 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 in England was mostly working in, in conjunction with an organization called Faith and Beliefs in Further Education. Faith and Beliefs. Mm -hmm. The beliefs are humanist, for instance, yeah, the, the non-religious beliefs, right. and, and the faith were different basically faiths. All, all, faiths. all the faiths that are practiced in this country. Right. And, and that in, even included Jainas and, 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 uh, and Parsis and what have you. Yeah. So what did you do with them? with them? You worked, you said, at the colleges. Yeah. I, I, the, 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 the main, our main work was with further education uh, colleges, like, like here in Beaconsfield Road, for instance. Yeah. Right. The and, and, College. Yeah, and we, we went there and we helped them set up sessions where people of different faiths would be available for questions or would do a little introduction and, and, and people could ask. Or sometimes we organized a little sort of mela in, 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 in a hall, you know, like all the faiths had a, had a market stall. Okay. Not to sell their faith, right. but to give information about everything. Bring place. awareness yeah. of different faiths. Uh, uh, sometimes I, there was a dialogue between me, for instance, and somebody, you know, me and a Christian, or me and a Muslim, and, and sort of highlighting what are the differences, what are, are the things in common, and what are the, uh, the things that we do differently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything to, you know, like, a lot of the tensions between faith, people of different faiths and different cultures are because people don't, don't know. know. They don't know. They, they, they see you with the pack, and they don't know why. Yeah. They see you with the beard, and they don't know why. They see you know, this, this big, 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 big kirpan, yeah. and, and they think this must be an ag aggressive so-and-so. Yeah, I yeah. have the same, um, I've been through my personal life as well. The people have prejudiced way of thinking. The yeah. way you dress, the way you look. Yeah. People have uh, perceptions, oh, this is who you are, do you belong to that group? Or yeah, yeah. they don't know much about it. They, many people I, I, I know is that, I mean, uh, we were talking about Belgium, I know is that a lot in Belgium as well. People think that because I dress like this, yeah. Yeah, that, it, that the statement means I do not be, want belong. to belong to Belgium. Yeah? But that's Which not what not it true. means at all. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I think our guru tells us to live in society. And if you happen to be in Belgium, the, that society is Belgium society. If you happen to be in UK, it's UK society. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we are not a Punjabi faith. In, we have a, very, are a faith that originated in Punjab. Yeah. Huh? And we have very important roots that are a lot of history. And I'm, I'm not doing away with that at all. But we are not a Punjabi faith. And God doesn't belong to Punjab. And God doesn't belong specifically to Belgium or to UK or what have you. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, read Jabs up. It tells, tells you all about it. Uh, and, and, but doing away with, with these prejudices and, and, and introducing the young people to people of, of different. You know, like if you live in London and you see 
a Sikh and a Muslim and a Hindu, for instance, sitting next to each other. And they're friendly with each other. Yeah. They know each other and they can work together. Yeah. That in itself is mind blowing for many people. Mm. Yeah? I agree with you. I agree yeah? with you on that, definitely. I've seen it through, on my, through my own work. Uh, people are from different backgrounds, different color, different races. We all together, we work together. Yep. And uh, uh, seems to work very fine, especially in London, which is very multicultural. But, but we also nowadays have that diversity in Sikhi. We have that nice picture with you and, and Ramkor, who is, I think she's from Caribbean she's background. She's from Caribbean background. Yeah, background and, and myself. So there's a Dutch Sikh, an Afghani Sikh, and a Caribbean Sikh. Yeah. Yeah? And, and nobody can say anything about, about Ramkor because he's a very fine singer. Definitely. Yeah? We know her very and, well. And, and, and you know, like, it's something that's, I mean, most people will say, Sikhi is for everybody, mm. but a lot of people have sort of in their mind that you really have to be a Punjabi to be a Sikh. To be a Sikh. Yeah? Well, you don't have to, when you talk about Punjabi, all I can say to Mavi is that Harjinder Singh is uh, very well versed, very well versed in Guru Granth Sahib. He can read Guru Granth Sahib Ji. He does pot, he used to do pot uh, at the uh, Singh Sabha Gurdwara in Hanslow uh, on a regular basis. And uh, he does Ardas fluently without any, without any problem in Punjabi. And, um, and like he can re read Punjabi very well as well. Um, the only problem he has sometimes, he doesn't speak as fluently. <laughs> However, he <laughs> does read and... Uh, I, I know more about Guru's language than about sp spoken Punjabi. That's true, yeah? that's true. So Harjinder, uh, I now want to come to the work you did as a, as a chaplain at this Heathrow Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, which is very important now because the issues we have these days, especially with yourself as Amritari Sikh with the Kirpan, with the, with the turban, uh, with the Dastar, with the Kara, with the Dastar Day. Tell us your experience as a chaplain, as a Sikh, Sikh chaplain at the Heathrow Airport. What was it? But, but in, in the first place, of course, the role of a chaplain, you know, whether it's in, in further education colleges or in university or that, is to be a listening ear. Mm. Yeah? And in all these situations, because I've been involved a little bit with universities as well, is the chaplain should be open to anybody who feels comfortable yeah. to talk to him. Regardless yeah? of your religious background. Yeah, exactly. I am, I am a Sikh and I make no, no secret about it, yeah. Yeah, as, as everybody can see. Yeah. Yeah? But if you are part of a multi-phase chaplaincy, you're not forcing yourself on people, on anybody, whether they're your own faith or not, but if a Muslim comes to me and wants to, wants to talk to me, mm -hmm. then he, he can or she can. Yeah? And I mean, like, there are a lot of people who are looking for somebody that they can talk to, which is informal, which is not, you know, official counselor, uh, counseling that provided by the employer or anything like that. Yeah so that they don't can't get branded as somebody like, with a problem. Yeah? And, and when they know that it's not going to be talked about. Yeah? So confidential. Yeah? That is very important. Now, the other part of the work that we did, and that is what you were referring to, is, is almost like being, you know, like, like a trade union man yeah? for the six. <laughs> Any Sikh who had any trouble about whether it's Kara or, or, or uh, the beard uh, or, or the, the, star. The, the, the star or, or you know. They can come and see yeah. speak to you. And then they came to us, especially my, 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 my good friend and colleague Amrik Singh, Amrik. they became a great expert in all these things. He, he's, I see him often on the, 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 the local, is it Sky Porch? Uh, yeah, the Sky Porch newspaper. newspaper, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, like, Again, yeah, the rules allow us to wear the full 5Ks in, 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 at Heathrow. Yeah. The rules allow us to have a beard and a park and what have you. Yeah. Yeah? But often there is either misunderstandings or, or the security personnel has a prejudice or what have you. Yeah. But we, because we are experienced and we're a bit older, we have to sort of the way to, co to go to these people or to their bosses mm -hmm. and say, listen, you know, there's a bit of a problem here, let's talk it over. And, and almost always we've been able, able to, to solve it, both with the big companies like BAA, but also with small em employers, because there's many people, that they, the, the bulk of the six work for BA or BAA, but there are also many small employers at Heathrow. Yeah. Uh, and and th they are often the ones that 
get more problems. They have more problems because they don't have the big, big organization. The, the big organization that knows all about. Uh, yeah. we, we had it through Heathrow. I was called by somebody. I, I, somebody knew about our work at Heathrow, and, and they called me and said, can you come to Slough? Because there is this cleaning company that I work for. I'm an Amritari woman, and, and they don't even know anything about Siki. Right. Yeah? And, and I wrote a very nice letter explaining everything, and I also pointed out to, to the anti-discrimination legislation, et cetera, et cetera. And they contacted us. And it was just at the time that I was about to leave mm. for Belgium. So Amrik Singh has followed it up. And the company was very grateful. To give yeah? information. Because they said, we just didn't know. Mm. Yeah? We, uh, we now realize that we made a mistake by refusing this woman. Yeah. Because yeah? eventually, you could have taken her to tribunal. And that ha could have ended up costing perhaps more money. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and but that, has, that will just then, then that, right. that will create so much bad blood, you know. Yeah. And, and what we have achieved now was that both the company and the employee were happy. Happy, yes. Yeah? And, 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 and we proved also that the company was not, you know, like they weren't racist or anything. They were just, they didn't know. They didn't know. They're yeah. ignorant of the law. Yeah. If, if you are ignorant, that's not bad. But if you're not willing to listen to somebody who knows more, yeah. then you're stupid. And, and this company wasn't stupid like that. They were very happy that somebody came and explained things. So, so that just wraps up about, uh, wraps up about your, your work briefly in, in, yeah. in the UK, of course. When we have another show, we can talk about more about it. But now I'll go to, um, to the Belgium. When and why you decided to leave the UK and go to Belgium? Mm. Leave Belgium. But you already mentioned Ypres. Yeah. Uh, Ypres, or people call it, sometimes call it Vipers. Vipers. <laughs> which is not right, the, the right pronunciation, what, what I promise. What is the French pronunciation? No, no, the French pronunciation is Ypres. Ypres. And, and in, in Flemish, it's Ypres. Ypres. And for some reason, most English people use the French spelling, which yeah. is Y-P-R-E-S. It it's, was one of the major battlefields. Yeah, OK. Uh, it was one of the major battlefields in the First World, World War. Yeah? And because the Brits were very low on, on a standing army, mm -hmm. what they did was the, the, the war broke out somewhere in, 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 I think, in the spring of, of 1914. And by October 1914, Two divisions of the British Indian Army were brought over. Right. It was the, the, the Lahore and the Meerut division. Lahore yeah. and Meerut division. Yeah, so Lahore from, from, from the capital Lahore of Punjab, Punjab and Meerut. Meerut is in Uttar Pradesh, but it is also you know, part of the Northwest. Yeah. And many of the soldiers were Sikhs. Or, uh, that, that was, you know, you had Sikh regiments in yeah. which you had to be an Amritari Sikh, mm -hmm. and you had like Punjabi regiments where you had many Sikhs who might or might not be Amritaris. Yes. You even had special regiments for, for must be Sikhs, for, for low caste Sikhs, right. because the, the British Army followed the caste divisions. Exactly. Yeah? Uh, the, the pioneers, the ones that, that sort of like, like would, would make roads for, for the army to do, you know, like they did a lot of sort of preparatory work that sort of the army, army uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. They were mostly Muslims, for instance. Anyway, so I, 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 uh, I kept going there. And through that, I got in touch with the, the, the Belgium Sikh community. But I, the, the, there is a man here putting up two fingers. And he's not being rude. He's saying that we are almost at the end of our time. So I think that uh, on other occasions, we will have to talk more about the Belgium situation. I, I just quickly say there are, at the moment, four Gurdwaras in Belgium. Three of them are in the Flemish-speaking area, on the, the Flemish, Dutch, the northern, speak, the northern, northern part. And one of them is in, in near Liège or Luik in, 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 in the Walloon-speaking area. Mm -hmm. But Luik is very near to where I am now in, 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 in Belgium, Limburg. Yeah, so really, the three of the Gurdwaras, they are also within 50 kilometers of, uh, of distance each of each other. Yeah? They are all, the majority in the, the community that I am in, all the adults are first generation, mm. and and they speak some Dutch, but not very well. But not very well. And then there's a new generation coming up that's now in sort of secondary school. So you are kind of mediator between. Yeah, I, I do. I do a lot of paperwork. I do a lot of sort of like, uh, applying for the, the permission to 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 do the Nagat Kirtan, uh, talk to the school. So basically, you are representing the Sikh community. Yeah. I, I, Belgium. I am sort of spokesman, stroke ambassador, stroke whatever. 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 Yeah. And it is very satisfactory because I am of use. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being useful is good, I think. Well, um, well, 
the time flies away if we want to talk to uh, uh, viewers in Belgium and Netherlands as well. The, uh, I'm afraid the time is not allowing us. Uh, I want to thank Harjinder Singh on behalf of Sikh Channel for being with us. And uh, I hope he has uh, inspired the viewers uh, like he inspired me about a decade ago. Uh, again, I thank uh, our colleagues of Sikh Channel as well as Harjinder Singh. And before I wrap up the, the program, can I ask, do, do you want to say any word, any last few words you want to say to our viewers? Or just give us I, 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 I'll say something very simple. About your plan. I, 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 will, I will, no, no, I, it's much more simple. If you stick to Guru's word, you will become more happy, you will become content, you will be, become a better person. Oh, why did you call Salah? Why did you keep